Hey guys, this is Dardamos with Dardamos Dominions, and I'm back again with Fallen. I'm back after a two video break. That's, you know, two videos is what, like two and a half turns? Maybe three. I don't remember how many you guys got through. So we are on turn 12, meaning that this is, this is, in my opinion, the end of at least testing expansion. Yeah, most indie provinces should be claimed by now. Okay, so I'm not exactly sure what he said with the Mercs, because I don't remember him having any Mercs. Um, but yeah, he says he's working on 13 this, this turn. While did you were gone, we asked... Buy, uh, what's... Did he buy the Marcada band? I don't remember... I don't think he did. All I remember is he just suicided like 50 infantry. Into and that might have been the city guard. Ah, the but yet, yeah, he suicided them into a territory and ended up just they they died. Nope. Generally, so what having, happened? We're having uh, dormant pretenders, and I remember Airmore had a dormant. Did do you remember anybody else having a dormant? I think somebody else has a dormant, but they don't wake up this turn. Okay. Oh, Grip, wait. Oh, hey, Gri Grippa's uh, assassinations are finally paying off. Uh, I still don't understand why he's making assassins out of his cap, but he is, and they're working now. They're working better than his normal expansions. <laughs> he, I think he lost another one last turn. He didn't expand at all. Yeah. I'm like losing a lot of undead every single fight. Oh, hey, he, uh, I think he did this one last time and bumped, but yeah, this, this was clean. This may be a very boring turn. I'm impressed. Uh, that was really cheap for barbarians. I don't know, he lost two knights. Now, here's a question. Why the, why did he bring these knights? Because knights are not gonna, like, what do you think, how, uh, do you bring knights in this situation against barbarians? If I'm bringing knights in this situation against barbarians, I'm bringing a whole lot more than two, so they don't get harassed down. Oh, yeah. yeah, if you look at this poor dude, he is, um, he's only harassed one, but it only takes one hit, and he's defense 15, and these guys have got, I mean, you only got to lose the roll by four, which isn't that hard. Oh, just before he dies, too. So, not the worst, uh... Worst attack in the world. Holy crap, that's 74 of these guys. Um... Yeah, they only cost 10 gold. That's true. And then, what the... He seduced the commanders away. Or, this is the oh. province that <laughs> Marignan's assassinating. <laughs> That is the province Marignan's assassinating. <laughs> I I see bad blood forming between us. What do you... Okay, so let's say theoretically you're the pan in this situation. You go in there and um, and there's no there's no commanders. And Mari comes up to you and says, you know, WTF, bro. What do you say to them? I tell Marignan to get bent and I attack them. <laughs> yeah, so you just go to war right away? Oh yeah, I tell him to go fuck himself, and then I hit that other forest. <laughs> so you take both forests, and then try to take Marignan on. Yeah. Turn 12? Maybe not with maybe not with that white centaur bless, but that's what I would do. If I had a better bless, I think I might actually agree with you. Um, but, yeah, the, the, the bless is, is less than... We were talking about it, and... Uh, Okay, what would you rather do? Whoa, 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 whoa. Back the train up. Look who's What's way out in front and is look, look, wants to get hit by just random cavalry. Oh, no, these are uh, Wolf Tribe. They're, oh, but they actually shoot arrows. Yeah. I I think he has them here because he's the... Oh, he's not... <laughs> Never mind, I'm out of ideas. No yeah. I think he's in the wrong place. 
That is a really big blast for, oh, he's got two of them. Okay, that's that a was, lot better. I wondered what was going on, because that's a big bless. So let me ask you this. Would you, I mean, you, you know what his bless is. Would you rather take one of these for 55 gold... Or, so so this guy's 55 plus the bless, or would you take this guy for 35, who's exactly the same except no bless, one less defense, and no javelin? I would take the white centaur, purely in this case, because he has fire resistance. And Marin Young is a fire astral nation. That's very true. How about during expansion? Well, normally, six white centaur will clear almost anything. This isn't normal times. So no I would take a whole bunch of Centaur warriors with his blast currently. Now do you remember did he already go after this province and lose to it? No, he lost to the province beside it. Uh this one right here? Yeah, twelve. Okay. Okay, so he he pretty much has no claim to this other than I want it. Yes. Now, if you're Marignan, what do you say, in, or what what is your response? You you know, your guys are obviously right here. What do you say to you know to to the pan player? Do you try to take it, or do you negotiate? What do you do in that situation diplomatically? Well, I would look at his bless and then realize, oh shit, it's got fire resistance. There's not much I can do early game since my early game plan was fire elementals. Maybe I will go up. Mind burn and tell him to get bent. Yeah, it's, uh, I could see mind burn would probably be a good option. Um, but yeah, it's, that's a good point. I even think about having the fire resist in there, even though the the bless is really bad. In this case, you think that it actually it's, it's decent. It is decent against Marignan and Marignan alone. Now, Ashdod has come out of the pond and has went back on land into Marignan's cap, too. Um, as Marignan, I mean, he's in a tight situation here. What do you do? I mean, it's, you said Pan has got fire. Uh, he's got south. He's got Aramor, whose territories are already starting to depopulate. What do you do in this situation? Well, there's two trains of thought. One, you fort up and temple up your southern front and just know that Ermor will never get exponentially stronger than it already is. It's a linear growth, unlike Scalaria and Nazca, which is an exponential growth. So they can just be honestly outcompeted because if you can kill a thousand long dead, you can kill a hundred thousand long dead. Um, Ashdod, if I was marrying John, it all depends on scouting. Ashdod's already up in Van's grill. I would talk to Van about a united front or just say, fuck it, there's no way he can reinforce that province he took with the war chamblers. Where did where did Ashdod's army go? I remember He's there being an army. Him. Was it here? Did they actually did the two armies meet? Oh my goodness, I missed this battle. And Van mopped the floor with him. I'm not sure if they did yet, so no spoilers. You literally clicked on the map and it was a banned flag. That's true, but I still no spoilers. What the crap? How does this win? So, like, we're talking these about high are... defense cavalry against an attack dudes. Yeah, and we talked about size sizes yesterday, and this kind of goes into it right here. Like, even though this looks scary, this is only, what, six guys? Because I mean, that's five guys. You got five guys in in four squares. That's the same as humans do in two squares. Much. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Now, if any of these ponies get poked by a giant, they die. But they're not going to get as poked by a giant. Doesn't look like they get hit at all. Uh, I yeah, think one of them got hit by javelin. Yeah, it's kind of now because you 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 play a lot of elf nations. How do uh, how do projectiles? Cause I always hear you know projectiles are are a good way to to deal with elves. How does that work? 
it'll pop glamour. It also, which is based, which is mirror image, and it'll mean that when you beat that elf's stupid defense roll, you actually will hit it instead of hitting its glamoured image. So you're more likely the defense roll goes away with an arrow, correct? Um, uh, a defense roll, I believe, has to deal with tracking and shield parry, not defense skill or archery. Okay. So by by shooting an arrow, you're bypassing one of their main forms of defense, and you're more likely to deal not a lot of damage, but one point of damage and drop their glamour, correct? Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Okay, that makes sense. And you can see these guys up here, uh, it looks like two of them are not glamoured already because of the arrows from the archer fire, probably. They got hit by javelins and live. But, uh, wait, where where is this fight? It's the realm. It's, uh, he attacked Ashdod in the realm of shadows. Wait, what? Yeah, we don't actually have oh. the results. Oh, I know what happened. He there we snuck go. attack. Now, they just added this, uh, they added this one, it's a, you push the C button and you can get this. Yeah, so it was a sneak attack. But that's a uh, disaster. But, well, the disaster here is he made a, a leavings. Like, he, he made what, sorry? He made those size four guys to begin with. Oh, the Edomites, that's, okay. No, Edomites are size three, they're fine. It's the one below them. The Gileadites, okay. Yeah, don't make those. Like, never make those. Those aren't worth it. Yeah, if he would have had these surrounding him, he would have had eight attacks going in, but they've only got nine attacks. I mean, this is not something I would send against an elf. Against eight vans, you might have gotten lucky with the javelins if you had more of them. Okay. Yeah, that's true. Um... Either way, this is not looking good for Ashdod. The opening salvo is... The opening big battle is a van, not just a, a win. Nobody died. Yeah, it was a complete mop of the floor. So that's, what is it, 400 gold versus... Uh, God, my brain's going up. Like 680 gold compared to nothing. Yeah, it's a disaster. That is a 700 gold loss. And when you look at his uh, Ashdod's retaliation attack on on Van, he lost all the war shamblers. Oh, jeez. Yeah, that's his big... Uh, and he lost... To, so, so this was just a PD dump. A smart PD dump. So what do you think about PD? What's your, what's your opinion on PD? If your PD has lots of dudes on horses, great. If it doesn't have lots of dude on, dudes on horses, don't use it. Do you use PD dumps um, other than uh, horse uh, than knights? Uh, horse, or race? horse horse tribe are decent because they got decent defense skill. Knights are good. Um, if you're a fire nation and you have enchantment four and a fire two mage, uh, a ton of archers is workable. But you never, I would never spend. Tw that was 20 gold. Uh, that was a 20 PD. Yeah. Just this early on in the game, unless it was to potentially kill one of their armies. Like, barbarians have a decent shot at killing war shamblers. I wonder if it was like a telegraph move. I don't remember if they were here or here. I, I don't, yeah, I can't remember where they were, but that seems like a pretty amazing, uh, that was a pretty good guess. I'm willing to bet his other coastal province is also. No, I remember what he did with the war chamblers. He took the war chamblers into the water. So we could probably see that they were in the water. And yes, then my question is, is, were they here or here, though? Because if they're here, the obvious answer, oh, no, there's actually two. Quite well organized. Oh, um, we can actually oh, see he, the he PD levels. Oh, that's right. So this is, this is, yeah. oh, my goodness. Yeah, he... He picked the right one. Or he got an event. That's true, too. But yeah, he just slaughtered him. Yeah. Okay, I, I mean, I think we can move on at this point. It doesn't look like there's anything else really forming on the border, except maybe... Oh, no, this is going here. I think that they negotiated yeah. this. 
let me go into the um turn real or to the uh into the Discord chat. And this is turn. I'm sad they fixed the. I'm sad they fixed the display bug, because when I was looking at Ermor's cap, it showed them having 120 knights uh, of the unholy sepulchre when they have like six. It's really weird. I have. Uh, oh, this is okay. I must have. Okay, that, that's what it's okay. Um, real quick, we have a whole bunch of stuff. No, I'm confused. Yeah, I don't know. I think 12 was boring. So what were you saying again, sorry? I'm just sad they fixed the display bug because Ermor's cap last turn showed 120 knights of the unholy sepulchre when they only had like six. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I, I'm missing some of them. Uh, you were, the, the, the skeletons in, in Scalaria were showing up as cultists. So it looked like he had like 700 cultists. Okay, I want to move on to the next turn because the next turn is is where things get spicy. Um, well, what? I thought this is where. Oh yeah, this is. Uh, because I I didn't look at the name. Uh, yeah, that's kind of important right here. So the elves have done something that um. I'm going to go to the province real quick and look at it. Now, he has no place to retreat. Do you do this? Oh, yeah. You just move off next turn. Or, well, yeah, in this case, it... 30 bands and 5 band years with, against the Ashdod build that he's facing. We'll just kill the Ashdod build. So he's comfortable to just sit on that cap. But if anything runs away through a freak morale check, it's dead, correct? So? You stop him from making the one thing that can counter you, Anakite. That's true. And so he you, would, has you have no problem with this. Oh, I would sit on that cap all day long. My, I might even be so ballsy to preach on that cap. I was, when I played in Lucid's uh, game, I did the same thing to, uh, oh, who was, who was that? Lanka? Yeah, Lanka. And I can just remember the stress of, you know, having my troops right here and giving that order knowing there would be no retreat. How, like, you've done, I'm guessing you've done this often. I've only done it once, and it was, uh, I mean, it was a rush, dude. Well, you do it enough times, and it kicked you in the teeth enough times, you know when you can get away with it. He just killed 41 units. He can get away with it. Okay. So he's not afraid of any of, of Ashdod patrolling or these guys taking a, an unlucky morale check. He was probably hoping to run into an Anakite or two and kill them. Okay. Like, this is just a squad of, of I guess it's, okay, no, it's uh, seven guys. So it would take, it would require him to lose three of them. And yeah, this is, this looks like almost a formation. He has his vans on fire, like the van here's on fire, which I find is odd. But other than that, it looks really nice. Yeah, this would uh, if he did if he did bring any mages, this would take care of it. And what's interesting is, um, doesn't Ashad have the ability to do like fire elementals? Yes, but probably not this early, correct? No, he should have fire elementals this early. Just lesser fire elementals. Okay, and that might have actually been able to have him hold off that, or do you think even that would be not enough? Ashdod fucked up, like uh. hard fucked up. He attacked. Uh, he attacked an elf when he only had one fort. Oh. <laughs> um. Why is that a mistake? Because the way I'm assuming I don't have to explain how dominions work, but if you don't have a fort. You can't recruit, and if you can't recruit, you lose. Okay, not only that, um, but look at his income. He went from income yeah. to no income. <laughs> he can't collect any income right now. He went from number two to number not two. <laughs> um, his jet income should have also hit the ground, too. 
Oh, uh, just it. a little bit. He most of his income is coming from his his capital, and you still get that. But yeah, he did lose the the stuff that he searched out, or that he na- like yeah, the lava like he naturally gets. But this that's is not the Google trace. Oh, that's the test. So he doesn't get that one either. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't know where he's got other gems coming from, but. Oh, here it is. Oh. It's right. It is a lava lake. No, oh, I, yeah, there are two lava lakes next to each other. It's a giant lava lake. Okay, so let's look at the other ones real quick. Um, white centaurs take more attrition. And this the is cave, one of them. Uh, why, how is it that, I mean, cause they've got, you know, 15 defense versus the cavemen, uh, nine attack. How does that work? So. I want you to look at the white centaur's attack and defense skills again. You see that big minus three? So it's it's actually brought up, it's kind of more of a faw 14 because it's the shield, you, you need the shield parry as well, right? Yeah, so he's only rocking 10 regular defense, and he has less attack than the caveman. Okay, meanwhile, the caveman are still at attack 9, and they do have a little bit of darkness, but... Okay, so they have Dark Division 50. Yeah, and if a caveman hits a white centaur, there's a chance that he can just one-shot it. Now, what's interesting is is that Pan usually has some sort of nature in their bless, and taking one of those points and putting it... I mean, how how many points does Dark Vision cost? Is it... One. Like one? Yeah, so it's one. So one point, and he wins this, he wins this fight. At one point he wins this fight with no losses. Oh jeez, also if he, you know, keeps them in a nice group, that would probably help so what, as well. So all his losses will be the group that got separated first, because they get harassed down and then smacked. Yep. Yeah. Um, just some interesting calls on Pan. I think that this is a learning experience. Probably the first time he's ever played Pan. Um, and I can tell from a fact that, you know, if I ever got to play Pan again, I would do things much differently. Um, yeah, you t- the way that I've been destroyed by Pan is they took Resist Bless, and then they just put a Lion Pelt, and a Sword, and a Fluffer to cast Moss Body on the Hierophant, and just sent them at me, and you can't kill 40 of them. <laughs> Yeah, these uh these hero fence are really good uh thugs. Do you want to go into why? I mean, like they look like trash. They're protection three. They're you know not the prettiest looking thing, and they're only 120 gold. They've got one random path. What makes this such a good thug? Well, what are makes you- it good is that the fact that it's cheap and it's an any fort mage. It only takes one turn to make in MA and EA. You need to grow the forts or steal them. But they berserk. If they're nature, they bark skin. If they're water, they do water buff, the water one buffs. But they have decent stats. They're holy and they can bless themselves. Uh, in the earth ones are, are particularly good because they can get the earth buffs on them too. Right? And then what what do nature ones do? Nature ones would probably bark skin. Okay, and I think there's a water version. Actually, I know there's a water version as well. What do you do with the yeah. water version so, ones? The water ones are the females and they don't berserk. Uh, I would first stick to the nature and earth ones, but there are water buffs where you can liquid body, quickness, breath of cold, but I've a breath of winter, I believe, and I would stick to these ones. Yeah, they, I, the centaur hierophant are the one thing that Oceania has. But not really; they have water nature ones, but they're the thing that allows Oceania to raid like Pan and pretend to be Pan. Are the ectocentaur hierophants because okay. Pans are just so good. 
Now, I'm kind of curious if we'll actually see any of these guys getting thugged up, and I hope that he does, because uh, thug builds are really fun to watch. Hey, Grippa killed those cataphracts. I'm proud of Grippa. So, uh, he's uh, taking the advice that somebody gave him in chat when they yelled at him for not using Sobek Warriors, because he's a dumbass. <laughs> Now, what's interesting of this is, is that, like, we talked about critical mass yesterday. No, and this is got the scary. formation set up wrong. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's the 20 frog guys with, with shields are behind the guys without hats. <laughs> yeah, yesterday, when he was uh, getting ready for his, for his throne rush, he's like, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. And I'm like, Grippa, you're going to screw this up. Check one more time that, you know, that the, the forts are going to come up and that, you know, you're going to, that, that you're going to claim the thrones. And I, I told him like four or five times because this is what Griffa does. He has a brilliant idea that is a really good one. And then he does one little thing that just screws it all up. <laughs> but I, uh, I mean, it, at the other hand, on the other side, it did work. I mean, Instead of losing the Sobak Warriors, which are expensive, right, compared to these guys, he lost yeah, the cheap Sobek guys. Warrior will survive a Lance Charge or two because they're high HP, high prot. Oops. Oh, yeah, you're right, they do. So, there are two types of Sobek. The awful sacred ones, which you can only get one of per turn, and the amazing high damage, decent attack skill multi-attack ones that hit like trucks that are cap only. Now, we talked about this before, um, and I want to touch on it again. A lot of people do still end up going Elite Warriors rather than Sobaks. Why? The Sobaks cost a lot, but they don't realize that a Sobak Warrior will kill two Elite Warriors every single round and will still outlive them. So a Sobak Warrior is worth more than two elite warriors. However, in resources, they cost more than that. That's that's what I'm seeing. The, the resources um, are 31 compared to nine, so you can pump more of these guys out. Except uh, they cost the exact same amount of gold. I personally love Sobek warriors. Yeah, I looking at people, it, I would do the same. Keep going, sorry. The only downside to them is they're cap only. That's fair enough. Okay, uh, moving on to Ashtod is taking is still cl uh, clearing Indies as their uh, as their cap falls. He made Wolf Tribe Warriors. I'm sorry, dude. I'm I'm trying to trying to go somewhere with this, and I I can't. <laughs> so he stuck around for a turn to recruit what appears to be. 120 golds worth of wolf tribal warriors for some reason. Okay, so what's interesting of this is that this is a player who's been around for a for a while. Like I think he's been around for as long as I've been around, and he's played a lot of games. However, he's never really he's never really turned that corner. And what's interesting is that. Like, we saw a brilliant expand by him. I mean, like, it was, it was, he got the mercs that he knew were, he knew the mercenaries were the ones that you bid for. Nobody else outbid him for it. He's making giants and still having the money to buy mercenaries. But then once it transitioned to middle game, why is making Wolf Tribe so bad? Uh, like, why? Wolf Tribe is just bad in general, but... They're undisciplined, they're human, and they're low prot. But they've got two high attack, uh, 12 damage piercing weapons. Okay, they die to arrows and slings. <laughs> now, one, one thing I would say to him is that if he took these against the elves, these actually wouldn't be too bad. No. Against the elves? If he could get, like, let's say, 50 of them, they might kill a couple. But the elves have 13 protection. It, that's still 12 piercing will go through 13 protection half the time. Yeah. 
And all he's got to do is hit hit him, and the defense starts going down, and he can at least get some harass. But they could also use length zero weapons, and they can be repelled. Jeez, you're right. And they've got a low defense, so they're not gonna they're not gonna uh, dodge the dodge the repel. And they have yeah. no hats. And they have no hats. I, I, that's the, that seems to me to be the least of their problems, except in this case because he sent them in against their own kind. Maybe he, you know, enjoys the the irony or something like that. But yeah, just a uh, um, real questionable move. I I don't think that I would go Wolf Tribe, and I don't think that we we saw him with the heavy infantry. I don't know if I'd even uh, do these heavy infantry. Um, let's move on to uh, Scalaria has moved on in ninety one barbarians. Do you attack this and take the losses, or do you say, screw that, I'm waiting for somebody else to take it, or skeletons? Well, the real answer is, if he had his dominion on it, how much gold is it? That's a good question. That's a really good question. Let's go to this province and check it out. It is worth 110 gold. Yeah, you say fuck it and take those losses. I mean, if you think about it this way, he how much gold did he lose on this? Three sixty plus, however, two two uh, so uh, four 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 fifty. So four fifty, he gets the money back in four and a half turns, and technically these shadow vestals four and a half turns he makes money. And he's already he's already gotten the use out of these shadow vestals, in my opinion. He's not <laughs> sorry, he's not using them for anything else. And he also expanded underwater again. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Um, you're right, he did. Uh. So, what makes these guys scary? Because they are normally scary. They're not in this situation. But what makes them scary normally, and why is it not scary in this situation? Well, an Ichthyid is a size 2 unit with size 3 unit stats. So they have the shit attack skill and defense skill that a size 3 unit has, but they also have the HP and the natural protection. On land, and against things that aren't undead, Stone spears and nets will wreck most medium prot things in MA. What's funny is I've seen these guys take out thugs and su even some super, well not super commands, but like a a low a low in um a low cost thug. I've seen these guys just wreck because they get the net on them and then just poke them to death. Um, what's the problem with with skeletons? Other than the fact that they're awful underwater. Uh, <laughs> They're pierce resistant, so the spear won't kill them all the time. Um, those are the bad ones too. Like even the ones with protection, like eight protection with pierce yeah. resistance. I mean, that thing it still does a little bit of damage, but skeletons were never about quality as much as quantity, and this just makes them a little quality. Huh. Okay. Let's see. Uh, moving on. Uh, I think that's about. Oh God, poor Airmore. He lost another sensor. Like he's so losing these what, guys left and right. So that event right there is an Airmore specific event where the remainder of the population rises up to try and save itself from killing, from save themselves from being killed by Dominion. Really, that is he awesome. He can technically get that in every single province he owns. Minus his capital. I think he ends up doing it too, because we've seen quite a bit of, uh, of of bad events for him. He's had rotten luck this game. Well, look at his scales. He's got he's got drain, and he's got turmoil as not turmoil and misfortune as turmoil. He's asking to be fucked by events. And it, I mean the the other thing is the drain three is. Uh, the drain three is going to end up being, you know, it's going to give him an, a whole new line of bad things that can happen. I also so, question that Demulich pick. I don't, it's funny, whenever I do it, I, I don't have a problem with the Demulich um, because it gives you high death and, and you want the death regeneration. And he's able to rainbow a little bit easier because his, his extra pass are 10 gold. What do you, or it's like 10 uh, points. What do you usually go? I usually go a little human mage who can walk around and sight search. Uh, so you want a sight searcher? Yeah, but I will still, t I'll take a dormant on Ermore, but I'll take luck three, magic three, 
and then go from there. Why do you take uh, luck three? You're going as a pop kill nation, as aggressive as Ermore and Lemuria. You're not going to have income past turn 20. Unless you're eating somebody. And let's be honest. There are people in this game who pick their nation specifically to count your. So you then need to think, I need to roll the dice to get some other income, and luck is the best deal for that. As Ermor specifically, you, until your god wakes up and you're able to summon big, big uh, death mages, you have no hard hitting action until you get a Timu or some tech. And a Timu by himself is a Wraith Lord on a pony who will become a hero every single game he's in and is virtually unkillable if he gets a certain trait. Yeah, what's what's interesting, I don't know why. I mean, in every game that I've ever seen him in, I have never seen him go luck. But I played, you know, and granted, this is single player, so you know how it is. And what I would do in single player is I had every single nation fighting me, and, and a team would just go from stack to stack, taking out entire stacks. And one of the things you need to do in Dominion is take advantage of a player that is um, not as, uh, like, they're, they they don't know how to deal with the counter. And, and Itimo is one of them that, that is very difficult to counter because, like, he's he's got immortality. How how long is his immortality again? Immortality one. He rises the turn he is killed. So you literally can't kill him. Without because soul he... slay, without soul slay, you cannot kill him. And that's funny because I mean, how do you know that as a new player or even as an experienced player where nobody's ever told you that? And it doesn't say that anywhere in the game that I know of. I I think that it says it in it doesn't say that it says that it was a patch. It came out later in the in the in the cycle, in the game development cycle, where Soul Slay would actually permanently make you not come back, including vampires, which is the whole reason why I feel that they brought it in. How, like why would you not take that? So I, that's why I would take, I would always take, you know, at least, at least luck one. Well, you can still get Ichimu on luck, on Misfortune two. You can't get him on Misfortune three. Misfortune three cock locks you out of all your heroes. So it completely knocks you out of any possibility of getting Ichimu. I just, I don't, I don't see it. it. Ichimu seems worth 40 points to me. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. Yeah. On Lemuria, I can see it, because you can already summon immortal consoles. But on Ermor, where you're just a whole bunch of shitty long dead, Itimu is literally the greatest thing you could ever get. Yeah, I, I agree. I just, it's really, it was a, it's a weird call. Um, let's see, is there anything else that we've got about... Um... I yeah, it's really weird. I I don't Marinian was telling me that they were gonna go after Aramore at this point to some extent. Um anything of note that you can see or are we finished for the turn? I think we're finished for the turn and I think we're on to the last turn of the episode. Actually we're at forty minutes, so I'm gonna cut a break in here and then I'm gonna get up and uh try try to get a breath between episodes. So uh guys, thanks for joining us and uh again, Valen, thanks for uh coming back and and, and uh joining once again. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. (laughs) Have a good one.